Hello and welcome to Verbling. Hi there, I'm Teacher Oakley. And for the next hour, we are going to be learning some interesting new vocabulary words. Uh, the unique thing about these words we'll be learning is that they consist of two repeated syllables. Two same sounds in a row. Uh, so a little bit of, well, obviously learning vocabulary as well as a little bit of pronunciation and uh, learning uh, some alliterative words. Words that are alliterative had repeated sounds uh, in the words or phrases. You can have alliterative phrases with rhyming or repeated sounds in them. Well, of course, rhyming r rhymes are repeated sounds. Uh, so, same thing. Okay, uh, welcome to the class, Heidi. Hello. Hello, nice to see you again. It's very hot today. <laughs> <laughs> Still again. Yeah, the, uh, the hottest temperature, highest temperature of uh, today is uh, 38 degrees Celsius, yahoo! <laughs> yahoo, all right. Turn on the AC. My, my body already uh, used to being this high temperature. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, my body will never get used to these high temperatures like that. Mm, okay, well, hang in there. <laughs> Do you have air conditioning, Heidi? No, no, no air, air conditioner, no uh, even uh, air fan. fan, only handy fan. <laughs> ah, you at least get yourself an electric fan. Yeah, I'm very friendly with that. <laughs> okay, let me, well, well, Vicente, where'd you go? Okay, uh, hopefully he'll come back. Uh, hello, Maestra. Hello. Hi. Am I pronouncing your name correctly? Maestra? Is that yes. right? Yes. Yes. Okay. You can call me Amy. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Better. <laughs> well, I kind of like Maestra. Uh, it's up to you. <laughs> okay. Uh, where are you from? I'm from Ecuador. Ecuador. Awesome. Mm -hmm. awesome. Great. Must be early in the morning there. Uh, Okay, well, uh, welcome to the class. We're going to be, I'm going to share with you, I'm going to screen share some words. I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to screen share partly the word, a letter, and then you can see how many letters. You can see where the break in the words are, and you can see the definition. I'll give you the definition. What I'm going to have you guys do, you're going to take turns, try to guess the word. See if you can guess the word, and um, and then try to use it in a sentence so I can make sure you get the, the real meaning of the word. Uh, okay, uh, plenty of room in the class. If others would like to join us, come on in. You can join any time, not a big deal. Uh, okay, let's get started. Let me do my screen share thing here. Okay. By the way, the fancy word for this, not that you guys really have to know, these are called uh, reduplicatives. That's kind of hard to say, but uh, these are called repeating reduplicatives, which is quite repetitious. Re meaning again, duplicate, of course, you may already know, means <laughs> to repeat. Wow, this is like three times repeating. Repeating reduplicatives. Okay, our first one. Heidi, the meaning is mm -hmm. anti aircraft fire. Anti aircraft fire. Anti aircraft fire. Begins with A. Three letters and then the same thing. Um, bum. The um. Um. No. It begins with A. Yeah, I, okay. Like arm. Arm, arm, arm. No. That's not it. Uh, to shoot aircraft, right? 
No. Uh, it's the actual, okay, when the guys, the pilots are flying in the air and they see the actual boom, 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 and those puffs of smoke you see in the movies mm -hmm. that are going bang, bang, bang all around the aircraft. Uh, that's it. Uh -huh. Yeah. Then uh, what I, I can do? <laughs> <laughs> well, nothing. If you, you can't guess, some of these are going to be really easy, by the way. Oh. Some of these are going to be really hard. You, you don't know it, you don't know it. Um, l let me ask other people in the class who would be Amy. <laughs> Amy, <laughs> do you have any idea what this word no. is? No. No idea. Okay, well, uh -huh. here's, a, here's a new word for you guys. The word is ak ak. Ak ak. Yeah, ak ak. That's it. That's the word. Okay. Can you use it in a sentence, Heidi? Uh huh. Hmm. Tom Cruise. I shot <laughs> ak ak <laughs> to the Russian aircraft. Okay. Probably he was shot by Akak. -Ak. Oh, okay. Akak -Ak surrounded the aircraft as we flew over enemy lines. Something like that. Uh, yeah. We, we don't normally. We wouldn't normally say we fired Akak. -Ak. It's. It really has more to do from the pilot's perspective. Uh, I guess it has. Maybe it's a little bit. Uh, onomatopoeia. Mm -hmm. you, know what, you know what onomatopoeia is? Mm. Uh, he Heidi, do you know what onomatopoeia is? Onomatopoeia. Yeah. Sound. Don't sound. ask me to spell it. From sound. Yeah, that's right. So I think this word comes from the sound. Ak, 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 ak. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe when it's fired? I'm not sure. Uh, okay. Uh... <laughs> Amy, where'd you go? Come on back. Okay. Hajar, welcome to the class. How are you today? Yeah, yeah hello, teacher. Yeah, I'm Hi. fine, thank you. Great. Uh, we're looking at words with repeated syllables. So, uh, here's your, your word, Hajar. It begins with A. It means yes, and here's the definition. It means yes often used by seamen. Do you have any idea? Yeah. What do sailors say when they say yes to their captain? Mm, any I idea? Like no. uh, Heidi, you know this one? Uh, no, but I can guess. Aye, aye, sir. <laughs> aye, aye. Aye, aye, Heidi. Uh, aye, 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 sir. <laughs> that's right. Or aye, aye, Captain. Uh, that's right. Uh, okay. Now, <laughs> most of these I'm going to have you guys try to use the word in a sentence. In this this particular word, it's really hard to use in a sentence other than a quote, like dialogue, all right? The, the sailor said, aye, aye, sir. Uh, so, okay. Basically, this is something that's really only spoken, um, or it could be written, but probably it's going to be written with quotation marks because this is a very much a spoken word, aye, aye. Uh, absolutely. Oh, okay, uh, then... Very good, Heidi. You you got one. Um, okay, Heidi. Next one. I bet you can figure this one out as well. Bum bum. Uh, spell it. You're close, but I'm not sure. B U M B U M. No. Nope. Uh, four letters. B blank blank uh, blank. B U M B B U M B. <laughs> not quite. <laughs> bum bum. <laughs> not quite. You. <laughs> Have the right idea. It comes from an onomatopoeia or a, a, something that sounds like the word. Hajar, any idea? 
bomb. <laughs> bomb bomb. Spell it. You guys are so close. Really. O O. What? L O. Blom blom. <laughs> yes. Yeah, no. <laughs> uh, put down your bang bang. Okay. Uh, okay. This this word is is actually, believe it or not, this is kind of an older use of the word. Uh, a bang bang. Uh, okay. The sound. Uh, now it's the sound of a gun. Um, or even uh, someone hit the desk fan. <laughs> yeah, could be. <laughs> All right, a sharp sound. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, I have actually seen this in writing as well. Uh, Hajar, can you try to, to... Oh, actually, no, this was Heidi. Heidi, can you try to make a sentence? Uh-huh. Uh, in the midnight, I heard... Bam, bam. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, but midnight being a specific time, you would have to use at at midnight. I heard at the. Midnight, I heard bam bam. I heard. So I the, woke uh, up. I woke up to the, the bang bang. Okay, I should say when we when we use this word, we usually say, we actually usually say of a gun. I I woke up to the bang bang of a gun. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, or the bang bang. Um, yeah, you're right. I actually have seen this used before for other sounds, like the bang bang uh, of a fist on the door. Uh, yeah, actually, when I think about this, this definition should be expanded. You you actually are right. Hajar, yes. next one here starts with B. Four letters in each in the repeated each repeated part. Any idea? A disease. No. Disease caused us by vitamin B. Deficiency. No idea? No. None? Okay. Heidi, can you take a guess? Uh, I got some. Um, the doctor uses um, hammer and <laughs> the, under the knee, right? Uh, I don't know. Uh, the hammer and the doctor, that's to check your reflexes. Yeah. As far, as Just far as under I know. the knee. And the oh, hip. I don't know. Then if your uh, leg um, jump up, <laughs> yeah. it's okay. But no reaction. It's kind of disease. Really? Mm. Very, very. That's the disease. Very good. Very, very. And this one actually does not have a hyphen. Very, very. Hyphen is that dash in the middle that you see in most of the others. Right. Very, very. Really? I had no idea oh, well, about that test. Famous. <laughs> okay. Doctor, doctor had a small hammer. And hit just under the knee. Hmm. And if you are healthy, you have reaction. No intention in the leg and the jump up. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I thought they were just checking your reflexes, but maybe that's one of the Simpsons. Sy symptoms, not yeah. Simpsons. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, reflex. Reflexes. Uh, okay, that's interesting. I had no idea. All right. Uh, next one, Heidi. Mm -hmm. Again, B, but only three letters. Hmm. Probably uh, know this one. A he sweet. Hedged uh, term. What's that? Um, uh, another student. For okay. Okay. Hajar. Hajar. Yes. Any idea what this is? A sweet. Do you know what a first of all, do you know what a sweet is? Yes. Okay. Like a candy. Yes. Okay. It's a bit of a bonbon. 
Oh, very good. Okay, you are correct. A bon bon. Okay, can you use it in a sentence? The children like a bon bon. <laughs> okay. Yeah, they, yeah, they do. Um, we actually, of course, they do. That's true. But this word is actually used. Normally, it's used when we're talking about somebody being indulgent, uh, self-indulgent. She she lies all day on the couch reading fashion magazines and eating bonbons, like that. Uh, um, I don't know why, but it tends to be used that way. It's, it's expressive of expensive and indulgent. Of course, obviously, it comes from the French word. It's a direct, directly from French. Yeah, even in French, in France, uh, they said chocolate at the bonbon. Mm, yeah, true. Candy and the chocolate, both. Yeah, yeah everything. R right. Uh, that's true. Okay, uh, Heidi. Uh huh. Next one. A mm -hmm. blunder. Uh, no, I've never heard. Yeah, I bet you have. Actually, mm -hmm. I know you have. Blunder is uh, like a mistake or something. Oh, yes, a mistake. But I don't know. Double word. Boo. <laughs> Boo. <-boo. Right>? Yes. <laughs> that's it. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> Uh, okay. Do you know how it would be used? Do you have any idea? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> it's also un has another use as well. Very common when dealing with children to talk about a small wound, a scrape or something, small cut or something like that, small maybe, burn. Maybe like if I used maybe I made a boo-boo. <laughs> yes. I made a boo-boo. Very common. This is exactly the sentence and exactly how we say it, as a matter of fact. Oh, shoot, I made a boo-boo. Uh, I made a mistake. Or like my kids, my kid will scrape her hand or finger or something. And I'll say, oh, let daddy kiss your boo-boo and make it go away. Uh, I don't know why that works. Why does that work <laughs> with kids? I have no idea, but you kiss it and they instantly they stop crying and they're all better. I don't really understand it, but I wish it would work with major surgery, but it does not. Uh, Saiban has joined us. Hello, Saiban. How are you? Hello. How are you doing, teacher? I'm good. How are you doing? Good. It's just another uh, hot day here in Iraq. <laughs> it's uh, a hot day everywhere. <laughs> yeah, hot day, but it's so hot here. It's it's almost uh, 109. So can you imagine? It's so hot. Yeah. What is that in yeah. Celsius? Uh, it's uh, 42. It's, uh, 40. 40, 44 or 45. 44. Yeah, that's about, that's yeah. right. 44, 45. <laughs> Gosh, that's ridiculous. I don't even know how you survive it. Uh, okay, so man, we're we're looking at words that are made up of two repeated syllables, exactly the same syllable, just twice in a row. Okay. Uh, so I'm having you guys try to guess them and then maybe see if you can use it in a sentence. Um, this, you start out with an, a really easy one here. It starts with a B, three letters, hyphen, three letters. Bye-bye. 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 <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, can you use bye-bye in a sentence? Okay. I say bye-bye to my mom when I leave Iraq. When I left, I'm sorry. Okay. Now, it can be used just like the word goodbye. But I have to tell you, you may have seen this in movies or something. Um, sometimes this is used as a dismissive goodbye, like a sarcastic 
uh, go away from me. Bye bye. All right, uh, but it's notice my intonation as I say it like that. Bye bye. <laughs> All right, just go. It's more like go away. But it can be used as as Saban used it as a normal goodbye. I say goodbye to my mom. I say bye bye to my mom. It's an informal goodbye. Bye bye. Uh, okay. Hajar, back to you. Now we're on the seas. Latin Latin ballroom dance. Latin ballroom dance. Is a what? Costa? No, it's not it. Not quite. Okay. Uh, anybody else hiding? Maybe cha cha. Not maybe, definitely. Okay, dance to cha cha. Okay. Do you know how to dance to cha cha, Heidi? Yes. Y you do? Hajar, do you know how to dance the cha cha? Nope. <laughs> nope. Okay, I think you should look it up on YouTube. <laughs> you can learn. All right. Dance the cha cha. When you say dance, okay, um, notice how I use that in a sentence. I learned how to dance the cha cha. I learned how to dance the foxtrot. He knows how to dance the cha cha. Uh, he knows how to do the twist. When we say the name of a dance, we all pretty, we always use the, okay, uh, for a specific type of dance. Uh, she can dance ballet, okay. Now that's that's a type of dance, so I don't need the, but a specific name of a dance, I will use the, the cha cha, the foxtrot. The twist, the mashed potato. Uh, all right, Heidi, can you do the mashed potato? <laughs> <laughs> no. Come on, it's easy. Okay, all right. Anyway, next one. Ah, uh, here's an easy one. You can get this. Choo choo train. Of course. Sometimes, uh, actually, as Heidi just said it, choo choo train. Sometimes just choo choo. Uh, right. Okay. How or why would you use this? The song, Choo Choo Train. <laughs> <laughs> that was beautiful. I don't know what you were singing, but it's marvelous. <laughs> okay. I think the heat's getting to you, Heidi. I don't know. Uh, all right. Well, this is kind of one of those... Like boo-boo, oh, a little child has a wound, we say it's a boo-boo. Or little kids say bye-bye. These kind of repeated uh, reduplicatives or a bang-bang for, for a child. Some of these are used with children, for children, talking to children. Not all of them, however. You know, you don't say I-I to a child. <laughs> Berry berry is not something you discuss with children. Not always, but some of them. Uh, ah, this one's interesting. Saban, another ch sound beginning, uh, meaning quickly. Um, um, I, I totally don't know, teacher. No idea. No idea. <laughs> You've probably heard it. Maybe not, but probably. Hajar, do you have any idea? No. Okay. Bring me the fire extinguisher. And then I would say this. Maybe. Uh, Heidi, any idea? Uh, no. No idea. No idea. Uh, okay. It's... Chop, chop. <laughs> like that. Okay. Chop, chop. Bring me the fire extinguisher. Chop, chop. 
Make it snappy. Hurry up. Chop, chop. Uh, How about snappy teachers? What's it's, that? It's, uh, there, there's a word. It sound the same uh, sound teacher when you say uh, it is choppy. The sentence is choppy, or uh, your, uh, or you say your your writing is it it is choppy. Okay. Uh, all right. Let's talk about the meaning of choppy. Choppy has a couple of meanings. Yeah, someone if someone speaking is choppy, it starts and stops. And somebody talking on the phone, for example, often sounds choppy. Or if you have a bad connection here in verbaling class, you sound choppy because it's on again, off again. Um, if someone's writing is choppy, it's not smooth. Okay, it, they actually the easiest way to think about choppy is to think about the ocean. When the ocean has lots of waves, maybe not huge waves, but lots of waves that have maybe just a little bit of white, white caps, but they're irregular waves, probably because it's windy or there's there's a storm coming. But the waves aren't very regular; they're kind of irregular and varied uh, not easy to have a boat in choppy or swim in choppy water it's very difficult to control a boat because the the waves have no regular rhythm it's choppy uh, plus you're going up and down and up and down it's the kind of weather that makes people seasick so choppy is just really irregular really has nothing to do with this. Chop, chop. Uh, Saban, do you know what pigeon English is? Do you know what um, that means? Chop, chop. Um, no. Well, it's, it no. says this is derived from pigeon English. Uh, does anybody know? Hajar or Heidi, do you know what pigeon English is? Ever heard of that? No? Uh, okay. Okay. The English familiar. Sorry, Hajar again. It's the English familiar. F uh, familiar. The the basic uh, and I don't basic. say I don't. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's very simplified English. Basically, yeah. the English traders used to use. Um. Uh. You know people trading on ships hundreds of years ago would use pigeon English very very basic trader English often used uh, in the Far East and in um, in China and Japan and other other places you know, other Asian pl places whatever it's basically a simplified form of English yeah and that's so somehow chop chop comes from that Chop chop, you will hear native speakers still say this today. It is generally only, uh, we only use this in command sentences. Bring me something. Chop chop. Uh, okay. Or do something. Chop chop. It's a little bit, to be honest, it's not like saying please hurry. It's a little bit demeaning. Uh, it's a little bit condescending. It's like something you would say to a servant so maybe it's not used that often anymore because it's not exactly politically correct but uh, I, I've heard it once or twice in movies and such okay the next one uh, it's kind of tough Hajar um, elaborate usually talking about clothes with lots of lace and frill very girly, super girly, very feminine, effeminate is the adjective. Ajar, any idea? <laughs> uh, no. Okay. This is a tough one. I, I'd be surprised if anybody knows this. Uh, Heidi, any idea? Uh, no. No idea? Saiban? No idea, teacher. Sorry. Yeah. 
Um, okay. Okay, this one, I yeah, I would be a little surprised if anybody knew this. It's a uh, it's, uh, frou-frou. <laughs> don't ask me where this, this must come from another language. I don't even know. But, oh, it's so frou-frou. Uh, okay, we use this word when something is too lacy, frilly, effeminate, um, too much detail, and just way too girly. Uh, okay, for example, when a grown woman dresses like a little girl. Um, oh my goodness, look at that frou-frou gown. Or when a man wears one of those shirts that has the lace cuffs, like the old-fashioned, like, I, I don't know, Pirates of the Caribbean when they have lace on the cuffs and whatever, feathers and delicate lace around the neck and a high collar, all that. Very frou-frou. Back in the 1700s, the men were, wore very frou-frou shirts. Overly elaborate is the idea. Uh, would you hear that? Mm, maybe. It's... It's it's pretty rare though, maybe maybe not. Heidi, let's look at the next one here. Mhm. Mm uh, virtuous was mad. I don't know. Virtuous. Well, first of all, do you know? Yeah. Uh, virtuous. A high self esteem. Well, they think they're really good. Yeah, that's you're right. But even more so, they they feel that they are they can do no wrong. <laughs> Right, um, and smug, uh, well, similar. Mm -hmm. uh, secure in their own rightness all the time. Uh, the key is actually more about virtuous and good and perfect. Mm -hmm. No idea? No, no. Uh, okay. Saban, any idea? Um, no, unfortunately, uh, teacher. I would say you're a real... She's a real g g <laughs> she's a real one of these. Uh, she's uh, you, you can't do anything slightly wrong around her or she'll yell at you. She's such a no. Hajar, no idea? No. Okay. She's a real goody goody. And you're often going to hear it that way. She's a really goody. She's a real goody goody. Or um, another one we often we, we use maybe more often, or maybe Americans use more often. Uh, uh, a goody two shoes. Oh, look at Miss Goody Two Shoes over there. Why would I say that, Heidi? She's such a goody two shoes. Mm hmm. <laughs> I don't know. You don't know? Okay. Well, and this one is pretty common a goody two shoes. And often with a, with, um, uh, a real goody two shoes. Uh, somebody, whatever. Uh, okay. One of the boys in class puts a tack on the teacher's seat so he can watch the teacher scream or he puts a frog in the teacher's desk all right a real goody two shoes would go tell the teacher those boys over there put a frog in your desk and they also put a tack so please don't sit down miss smith so yeah she she will go tell if you ever do anything wrong she's got to be perfect about everything uh i don't know just uh, being virtuous for the sake of being virtuous, not really because she's a nice person, because she thinks that makes her better than everyone else. Uh, like that. That's kind of the idea. Okay. Uh, next one. Saban, you know this one. Yeah, ha ha. Ha ha. Yes. Okay. Uh-huh. 
why would you say this? Why would you ever speak? Ha ha. Ha ha. <laughs> okay, I think because like it's the laughing sound. So yeah, he he or ha ha or ha 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 or yeah, oh, ho ho. ho. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, but, <laughs> the, I think uh, even the way of the laughing is is different from country to country. <laughs> uh, I I think. Okay. Well, from person to person, in reality. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, okay. Some, someone shouldn't. I mean, la sound like haha for laughing. I mean, he, he probably <laughs> might be <sound> different. <laughs> okay. Okay. How would you ever use this in, in realistic English? Ha-ha! Ha-ha! Um, okay. Um, uh, in, uh, in, in the sentence, teacher, did, did, huh? did you... Uh, uh, I mean, did you ask how... Uh, how we how we suppose use ha ha in the sentence? Yeah. In the right. Yeah. Uh, maybe in the story, when I mean, maybe in the story for I mean. Okay. Uh, when, when for when you say a report, uh, a report speech, report okay. speech, when you say somebody he, he then laugh and then the prince and princesses they laugh and kiss each other and. <laughs> so the end, the end of the story. <laughs> oh. so, yeah. Okay, that's right. To report a narrative, that's that's true. Or to narrate uh, speech, that's absolutely true. But I kept trying to give you a clue. I kept, ha ha! I see what you've been up to. Uh, sometimes that's ha ha or aha. Ha ha! No, you won't win. Ha ha! Sometimes we actually make that sound. As if to laugh at you. Uh, we're playing chess, for example. Ha ha! I've got you now. Checkmate. Hee hee! I won. We actually can actually say that sometimes. And of course, ho ho ho. We all know who says ho ho ho. It's for uh, for sarcasm, yes, teacher. It's, it is for for sarcasm, sarcastic. Uh, maybe, kind of, in a way. Uh, Hee hee! I won again. Okay, I may actually say that out loud, and not laughing, but actually saying, "Hee hee! I won again." Ha ha! You lost. Yeah, when I say "ha ha," you lost. I'm being sarcastic, right? Who says "ho ho ho"? Hajar? You know who says "ho ho ho"? Or really? Ho! <laughs> Oh, ho. Oh. Yes, of course, Santa Claus. Santa Claus, that's how Santa Claus laughs. I think he's the only one who laughs that way, but anyway. Okay, Hajar? Yes? Confidential, starting with H. It's a secret. Any idea? Uh, maybe hey hey. Hey hey, hey hey. <laughs> uh, no, that's a good one. Hey hey, that's a greeting. That's one that should be on the list, but it's not. Um, no, this one. It's all very blank blank. Oh, the whole uh, his his upcoming promotion is all very blank blank. Some more boys. No. Mm -hmm. Well. Well. To you are ears. Yeah. So. This is the word that you say to someone when you want them to be quiet. Repeat it. No, his his. No. Four letters. If you want somebody to be quiet, what's a way to command somebody to be quiet? No, not shut up. Um. But more polite way. Does, do you know, Saiban? Do you know? 
Maybe we, we say hush. Maybe hush. you do. Maybe you do, and that is actually exactly correct. Hush. So something's very hush hush. All right. It's all very hush hush. Uh, it's a secret. No one's supposed to know. But we're talking about it because we know the secret. Oh, um, oh, the the secret agreement between the two men is all very hush hush. It's all hush hush. It's a hush hush agreement. Uh, so it's used as an adjective. Uh, okay, to me, secret. Well, confidential. All right. Uh, how else do we say that? Does anybody else know another way to say something's very hush hush? You're going to keep it hush hush. You're going to keep it. No? Anybody? Does anybody know this expression? On the down low. Keep it on the down low. Ah, <laughs> uh, no. Uh, here. Uh, Here's another way. Very formal because it comes from Latin. We'll keep it all sub rosa, which actually means under the rose bushes, like we're hiding behind the rose bushes talking. Uh, that's very formal, and you don't really see this one very often anymore, maybe in writing. Uh, on the down low popular culture. You still can hear hush hush used, however. All right. Um, moving on, uh, Heidi. Hmm? Do you know yeah, this one? It's very easy. Moo -moo. Okay, it's easy for you because you're in the area. Uh, okay, I have to. How do you spell it? Okay. Who wears a moo moo? A uh, woman in Hawaii. Uh, well, all right, women. That's right. When they are dancing. Yes, the ones that you see them dancing in. That's right. Uh, okay. All right. Very good. Do you uh, do you own a mumu? <laughs> no, I don't have any. But you don't have a mumu. There are some uh, mumu crabs. Women know where where, where uh, the mumu and uh, put a uh, high biscuit on their head. <laughs> Always smiling and dancing. <laughs> yeah, it's very nice. Um, <laughs> instead, of men uh, wear uh, aloha shirt. I don't know what. What do the men wear? Uh, aloha shirt. Aloha, aloha is a uh, good morning or goodbye or uh, always they say they say aloha Hawaiian word. Ah, oh, right, aloha. Uh, the shirt, yeah. aloha shirt. Oh, really? That's what it's called. Mm -hmm. All right. No, I did. Men, men right, right, right. I did not. I didn't know that. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Well, that's interesting. Uh, all right. Um, uh, next one. Uh, another easy one for you, uh, Saiban. What do you think? Uh, um, uh, well, I think teacher 99, 90, 90, 99, I'm not sure. <laughs> nighty night? <laughs> okay. 99. Or you're right, it can be night night. All right. Night night. night, night. All right, when we say this is actually very common. Say good night to your kids. Night night, or as you said, sometimes it's uh, nighty night. Nighty night. Sleepy tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Very good. Hajar. Yes. Forbidden. You shouldn't do it. It's a. What? No no. It's a no no. Okay. Very good. Ooh, that's a no-no. You did not, you should not do that. Last one here, Heidi. It's very simple. Oh, it's not the last one. Papa. Of course, it's Papa. Uh, of course, that's very common. 
obviously. Uh, okay, and Saban, how about this last one here? Papaya. What's another name for a papaya? Um, uh, oh yeah, um, uh, I, I, I don't know, teacher. I, I, I try to guess, but it is even so hard. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah. Okay. If you haven't ever heard of it before, it's going to be impossible. No? Uh, Hajar or Heidi, does anybody know the name for a papaya? The other name for papaya? No. No idea? No. Okay. okay, this is called a pawpaw. Go over to the pawpaw tree. Pick me some pawpaws. I have no idea where that comes from. <laughs> but uh, it's actually, you, you may not have heard of this in this part of the world, but I've actually, in America, I've definitely heard of it, and I've definitely heard of it um, in the Caribbean. Uh, I'm not sure where it comes from originally, but I definitely heard of it in the Caribbean. Okay. Uh, we made it all the way through those. So uh, i got to change it a little bit. and Let me share another. Uh, another bunch of information here. Now this one, the reduplicative that we're looking at has one vowel change. So the vowel changes. Um, for example, uh, Hajar, gossipy talk, there's one change in the vowel. So it's not the same exact syllables. Any idea? Let me show you. Some. Any idea? Chut, chut. No. Chit, what? Oh. Let's hang out and we'll maybe... Do you know what the second one is? No. Sure. Let's have a little chit-chat. We need to sit down and have a little chit-chat. Uh, okay. This one is actually quite common. Um, gossipy talk or sometimes... Like I just said it to you, we need to have us a little, we need to have ourselves a little chit chat. Um, actually, we use this word when we're talking nonsense, gossipy nonsense talk. We also use it when we need to have a very serious discussion, interestingly. Uh, Heidi, the sound of a horse's hooves. Again, one vowel changes. Clip, clop. Clip, clop, clip, clop, clip, clop, clip, clop. Yes, indeed. Clip, clop. That's it. Very good. Hajar. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Lines. Maybe roads, train tracks. No? Heidi, no. you have any idea? No. Okay. Uh -huh. Chris? Chris? Chris Cross. Chris Cross. Chris Cross, Chris Cross. Okay. Um, uh, both David and I were traveling Europe and our paths crisscrossed several times, once in Paris, once in London, and again in Berlin. Uh, okay. Crisscross there. So we can use it when lines or roads or paths or train tracks intersect. We can use it when you when time intersects, actually. Time and circumstances. Uh, Crisscross. Uh, okay. Uh, all right, Heidi. Do you know this one? To loiter. Loiter. I don't know. Loiter is the word uh, to walk around on uh, idling. Walk around or just stay in one place. 
but to basically do nothing. Right, idly is the key. To idle, to do nothing, to loiter. Um, if somebody's wasting time, we, we use this. We usually use this as a command. Stop your... Uh, Hajar, any idea? Oops. No. Stop your dilly-dallying. Don't dilly-dally. Hurry up. Okay. Dilly-dally, if it seems that you're wasting time, someone would tell you to stop dilly-dallying or... Don't dilly-dally. Let's hurry up. We need to go. We have to go now. Don't dilly-dally. Don't waste time. All right. The next one, you know. Uh, Hajar? You know this one. What is the sound of a bell? Deep dock. Deep dock? No. Ding dong. Ding dong. That's it. Ding dong. The witch is dead. The wicked witch. The witch is dead. Ding dong. The wicked witch is dead. Uh, okay. Uh, Heidi, do you know this next one? What is foolishness? No. No, I don't know. Uh, I know flip flop. <laughs> The next one? The next one, yeah. Ah, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I didn't know that. That's the next one. All right, that's okay. Uh, okay. This one, yeah, you probably don't know this one. This is more British anyway. Um, um, flim flam, but if something's flim flam, it's not that it's foolish, mm. really. Oh, I don't know. I've never heard. It's, it's not so much that it's foolish. It's that it's um, it's foolishly okay. Like something is a flimflam. It's just a. Uh, it's like a con or a trick, but it's a really bad one. <laughs> it's a silly one. Uh, it, it's it's not good. Um, foolishness. Okay. All right. Uh, the kids are up to some flim flam. They're trying to get, they're trying to steal cookies from the kitchen, and they're up to some flim flam. Okay, they're secretly plotting in, in a foolish way that kids do. They have some elaborate plot to swing in through the window on a piece of rope or something ridiculous like that, like foolishness, silly. They're being silly, but it also has to do with the idea they're trying to get away with something. Uh, okay, the next one, uh, backward somersault, a sandal with a piece between the toes. All right, Heidi already got this one. That is a flip-flop. Flip-flops. Okay. Oh, <laughs> only one left, Heidi. Heidi. Um, well, Heidi. a hip-hop. Got to be hip-hop, of course. Hip hop music. All right. Liking your style. Uh, uh, funky hip hop. All right. Very good. Hajar, welcome back. Yeah. Can you Hi. hear me? Yes, I can. Loud and clear. Yeah. All right. Another one with one syllable change a trinket, something ornamental. Has no real purpose, usually. You might put it on a shelf in your room for decoration. Uh, what does it mean, a trinket? <sighs> a trinket, some small thing. Maybe the, possibly a souvenir, uh, a miniature Statue of Liberty that you buy from your trip to New York City. Oh, uh, okay. A seashell that you found on the beach when you went to Brazil. Whatever. Um, small kind of decorative things. Uh, okay. it, it could sometimes a trinket can be jewelry. All right, but this word that we're looking for with K N, this is not jewelry. This is more the other kind of trinket, like I was describing. Uh, 
a, a trinket could be a, a cheap piece of jewelry, but that's not what we're looking for. So, KN, um, what do you think? Really? You put it on a shelf. In fact, we actually use this as a type of shelf. Um, <laughs> we actually use that word. No, uh, Any idea? No. Uh, Heidi? Knick-knack. Knick-knack. Okay. She's got lots of knick-knacks. She puts them on her knick-knack shelf. All right. Little things that you keepsakes, little kind of decorative things that you might keep on display in your living room or your kitchen or something. All right. Uh, Heidi, a confused mixture of something or some things. No, I don't know. Ah. Uh, this feud is, well, the second part of this word, the second word is used a lot to talk about a mix of things, a mix of media, a mix of, um, well, it could be all different kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hajar, any idea? No. Mishmash. Mishmash. A very confusing mixture. Uh, things that don't really go together. Could be in cooking. Could be other types of things. I was thinking of a mashup. People now use that word a lot. Uh, okay. Now the next one. I know you know. Hajar, table tennis. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> B. No? No. No, you know table tennis, right? The game? It's very similar yeah. to Hong Kong. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it is. Okay, obviously Heidi knows. Ping pong. Ping pong. You ever play ping pong, Hajar? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, all right. Again, alliterative. Uh, well, it could be onomatopoeia. Ping pong. Ping pong. Uh, okay. Heidi, a light tapping sound. Uh, no, I don't know. Such as raindrops on the roof or... Maybe a cat walking past your window. Mm -hmm. uh, no? No idea? Hajar? No. no idea. We often co co no. Do you know now? Peter? What? Either? Ladies? No. no. Peter, pa Peter Patter. The Peter Patter of little feet. This is actually a colloquial expression. Oh... Um, Mary is pregnant. Soon she will hear the pitter patter of little feet. The pitter patter of little feet basically <laughs> means a baby. Oh, pitter patter! I know pitter patter. <laughs> yeah. Tongue, tongue twister. Yeah. Okay. Oh no, Peter Piper. Peter Piper. Peter Piper. <laughs> Pick a <peck> of <laughs> yes. pickled peppers. Uh, okay. Uh, Hajar, rabble, people who are worthless. We need to keep out the, any idea? Rabble. I'll give you the first one. Riff. Change one syllable. What do you think? Roof. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, the riff raff. Keep out the riff raff. Okay, people who have no money, uh, average street people. What's that? Ah, this is an actual physical meaning, and engineers would know this. Uh, the next one, broken stones on, not on water, in water. Uh, should be should be in water, not on water. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's used to keep rivers from moving around, so you know they don't 
rivers tend to move over time as they, you know, eat away at the dirt and so forth. So, uh, they or on the sides of roads as well, they put riprap. Riprap. It's called riprap. Mm -hmm. When you see all those stones on the side of the highway, that's riprap. It's meant to keep the uh, dirt, the soil from wearing away. It's meant to stop erosion. Uh, lots and lots of broken, mis different shaped stones. It's called riprap. Okay, well, actually that's all we have time for. Hope you learned one or two interesting words. And I'll see you ladies again soon, I hope. Bye.